Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a faulty Sega Mega Drive. Uh, now this isn't any old Mega Drive, this Mega Drive used to belong to me. Um, I modded this thing oh, I think over a couple of years ago now. And it's got one of my very early prototype uh, switchless region mod boards in there. Uh, and I gave it to a friend and it's been working uh, perfect for a couple of years. Uh, and I get a text message the other day from my friend saying uh, there's something gone wrong with it. Um, you can hear it playing in the background, um, but you can see the, the colours aren't right. Uh, there's something wrong uh, with the colours. Uh, now I got the text message. I phoned him back, and he turned around and said it was it was perfectly fine. Um, the colours went funny for a second. The colours came back to normal. Uh, and then about 10 seconds later the colours went funny again and they've stayed that way ever since uh, and from what I'm looking at it looks like we're missing the blue colour uh, from the RGB uh, now I can tell you straight off the bat there's nothing wrong with the uh, SCART cable because this is my SCART cable uh, so I can rule that out because it's doing the same on his as well so uh, I can rule that out but yeah we're definitely missing the blue color so I think this is a, a, a fault internal uh, to the Mega Drive so yeah if you stick around I'll see if I can fix this thing let's get into this Mega Drive and now to do that there's six screws I need to remove uh, there's one here there's one here there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and the final one is here. I'll remove those and then I can take off the top lid. That's the top lid taken off. Now if you're working on a, a unmodified Mega Drive, what you may find is, uh, well you will definitely find, is there is a couple of wires coming off this uh, LED connector just here. They go to the top case, uh, that old D power indicator LED. Uh, it's very easy to get that off though you just straighten the, the leds legs out and then you can pull the wire off uh, and then you'll have a little wire uh, hanging out but this one's been modified it's got the switch this region mod in there so um, i put a quick connect in there i can just pull off uh, if i ever want to take the lid off um, but yeah what i need to do now is i need to get this shield off now to do that i need to remove uh, this screw just here and then i need to just go around uh, and remove every single screw uh, that is around the shield uh, and then I should be able to pop this top shield off that's the top shield removed you can see my prototype switchless region mod board in there uh, what I need to do now is remove the actual motherboard to do that I need to remove a number of screws uh, there's one just here inside of the cartridge slot and there's one at the opposite side as well and I'll also need to remove uh, these three screws if I remove those, I'll be able to pull them off board away from the bottom case. And that's the Mega Drive's motherboard removed from the bottom case. Uh, now, what I need to do now is I'm going to be working in this area just here. Uh, so to do that, I need to remove this heatsink. Uh, so to get the heatsink off, I need to remove uh, this screw and this screw from the two 7805 voltage regulators and there's a screw on the underside and a screw here on the underside that I need to take off if I remove those I'll be able to take off the heatsink and then I can get to the, the actual video portion of the board so that's the heatsink removed I can actually work on the video portion uh, now the first thing I want to check is uh, this is the video encoder chip um, if we take a look at the schematic for the Mega Drive, we've got our RGB going into the video encoder and it spits the RGB out here. Now if we take a look at blue out, it's pin 21, we can see it goes directly out uh, to the pin 8 DIN. So what I want to do now is get my multimeter and just verify those two points are still connected between blue out pin 21 and the DIN connector of pin 8. So I'm going to get my multimeter on continuity uh, and I'm going to
test between pin 21 of this VID encoder chip and pin 8 of the DIN. So what I've done to check that connection, I've got my multimeter on continuity. There you go, there you can hear it beeping. Um, now, uh, this is connected to pin uh, 21, which is blue out. And I'm going to put my opposite probe on pin 8 of the DIN uh, to see if we've got a connection. Now, if we take a look at the actual DIN just here, this here it is pin 8. So let me take my probe and see if we've got a connection. And we do. So that proves that the connection between pin 21 of the video encoder chip, uh, which is the blue output, uh, goes directly to uh, pin 8 of the DIN uh, and that's perfectly fine. So there's no break in the trace uh, between the video encoder chip and the DIN connection. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do now guys is uh, I'm going to have to fire up my scope um, to take a look at what the video encoder chip is doing. Um, because I want to see the signals coming in, especially the blue signal. I want to take a look at that, the video uh, signal coming in and also the video coming out. Uh, so I'm going to fire up my scope, uh, take a look at those signals. Uh, if I find anything, I'll obviously come back and let you know. And I found the fault. Uh, not too difficult, this one. Uh, it sticks out like a sore thumb, actually. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the RGB uh, going into the video encoder chip uh, and show you that working. Um, so... Now I can't leave this on for too long because obviously I don't have the heat sinks on this. So I've got to be pretty damn quick. Uh, otherwise these are going to thermal shut down and the system will turn off. Um, so let's power on, take my scope probe and I'm going to put that on the red signal uh, just there. And you can see uh, the red signal, in fact you can actually see if you look at the press start there, you can actually see it popping up. Uh, on the video signal <laughs> so that's red uh, let's go check out the green signal again looks fine and check out the blue signal uh, and again uh, that looks perfectly fine so let me power this off now uh, so the RGB coming from the Seeker custom chip uh, it's going into the video encoder absolutely fine uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let these cool down a little bit um, before I power it on again and I'll show you the RGB coming out of the video encoder chip and you'll see what the problem is I've let those two voltage regulators cool down now in fact I can actually touch them um, so what I'm going to do now is show you the the problem <laughs> you'll see it straight away uh, I'm going to show you the RGB uh, coming out of the video encoder chip. So let's power on. Uh, we've got image, yes. Uh, now the first one I want to show you is red. So I put my probe on there. Uh, and that's red as you can see. Uh, it looks perfectly fine. You can see that flashing text on there. The press start logo flashing on there. Uh, that's the red. Uh, let's go to the green. And as you can see, again, and that's perfectly fine. Now let's go to the blue. And here's our problem. Done. Toasted. Uh, it's not doing anything. Um, take the probe off. And then put the probe back on again. Got to be quick because those voltage regulators are getting a bit warm by now. You can see it's not doing anything. So, yeah, let me turn the power off now. Uh, that's what the problem is, uh, the blue uh, channel coming out of the video encoder chip is uh, toasted um, because we've got RGB going in, we saw those signals, they're perfectly fine. There's no reason why we shouldn't have RGB coming out uh, and we don't uh, We on one channel, the, the blue channel. So this video encoder chip is knackered guys. Uh, now I actually have a, a replacement video encoder chip, uh, I think it's on a master system 2 board I'm gonna have to go and find it 
um, but yeah I should have a replacement now this would be a good candidate for something like a, a triple bypass board you know because that's got a video encoded chip on it and with this being busted it'd be a perfect candidate for a triple bypass board but I think I've got uh, one of these video encoder chips on a master system 2 board so uh, I should be able to take that off uh, and swap this one now we've pretty much uh, pinpointed it to the video encoder chip uh, let's get that thing off and let's get it replaced What I'm doing now, if I uh, could move my big hand out of the way, <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm putting some fresh flux, some, some fresh solder uh, onto those pins of the video encoder chip. Um, that solder has been there since what the, the late 80s uh, and it's always nice to put some fresh flux and solder onto those pins. Um, it will just make it easier when I'm using my desoldering gun uh, to desolder those pins of uh, that video encoder chip so yeah that's what I'm doing I'm just putting some fresh solder and flux onto those pins uh, to make my life easier when I use my desoldering gun And as you can see, that's the faulty video encoded chip removed. Uh, let me go and get the, the other one. Uh, and we'll put the the new old one <laughs> in there. And hopefully we should get our bloom back and have some nice RGB. Now this is what I'm going to use as a donor. Uh, this is a Master System 2 board. Uh, as you can see I've already nixed uh, some of the memory and uh, the CPU off it uh, it has a faulty custom chip guys uh, and once once one of these two go uh, you might as well just use it as a spares because uh, you're only ever really going to get these on a, a, another master system too um, but yeah here's the video encoder chip you can see it just here it's the same one what's in the mega drive um, I've already desoldered it I've just put it back in its socket so I'm going to take this uh, and then put that in that uh, mega drive and then hopefully we get our blue back and we've got some nice RGB I've desoldered the new old <laughs> video encoder off the master system 2 board uh, I'm gonna obviously solder it into the socket now now I don't have any sockets to actually put this video encoder in there so I'm gonna have to solder it straight in um, the reason for that is the width is a little larger than a standard socket and I don't have any of those uh, sockets to put this uh, video encoder in so I'm gonna have to solder it directly in there um, but yeah hopefully I get this in there we get a blue back and we get some nice RGB what you see me doing here is I'm actually holding the video encoder chip in place with my little finger and I'm tacking the four corners uh, of the video encoder chip and then once I've got those four corners tacked in place I can obviously let go and solder in the rest of the pins of the chip so that's what I'm doing I'm just tacking those four corners uh, and then I can go ahead and solder the rest 
of the pins on the video encoder chip. That's the new old <laughs> video encoder chip installed uh, off the Master System 2. Uh, let's get some cables hooked up uh, and see if we've got our blue back uh, in our RGB. Video encoder chips been replaced uh, with a new old one from a Master System 2. I've got some leads hooked up i've got a game in the cartridge slot uh, let's power on and see if we've got our blue back and we do winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> so yeah it was that video encoded chip uh, so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to spend five minutes uh, putting this mega drive back together again we've got our blue back baby <laughs> okay back together this is the culprit I'll show you what was wrong um, if we take a look at the video encoder chip circuit uh, for the Sega Mega Drive uh, we can see here's our TTL RGB coming in uh, it comes from the custom 3155313 uh, I see uh, now if the blue had failed coming from this uh, that's a bad problem and um, that's pretty much a new mega drive board because you're only going to get uh, that chip uh, on another mega drive and um, so uh, thankfully it wasn't that so uh, here comes our RGB the first thing that happens it gets uh, pulled up to the 5 volt rail uh, what we can see is each RGB channel then goes through a, a voltage divider um, and that's to knock the signal back because it's too hot for the video encoder chip and when I was probing that on my scope I could see they weren't TTL level uh, going into the video encoder chip um, but yeah the, the TTL side um, of the RGB was perfectly fine um, the problem was on the output side um, and obviously yeah, it was the blue output that failed blue output on the video encoder chip Well, that's what was wrong busted video encoder chip so let's power on and there we go we got all our colors back so yeah I hope you liked the video guys if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one yeah we got blue back <laughs> Catch you next time guys. <laughs>